This module focuses on running your community organisation or group well. This is called governance and this presentation will provide an overview of what this means. So let's start by thinking what makes you a community group? The main characteristics of a community group or organisation is that it benefits your community. If you're a small group, you may not need a lot of funds to operate, but most groups find that they have to generate income through applying for grants, carrying out fundraising activities, or receiving donations. Your group will also be not-for-profit, with any funds being used to run your group and deliver your activities. Community groups are independent. Most groups operate with having members who then elect a management committee to run the group. Groups will need a set of rules on how your group is run. This is known as your governing document, with the most common one being a constitution and a clear legal structure. I'll talk about that more in a few moments. Very simply, governance is the running of your group. As you can see from the definition on the slide, it's about making sure your organisation achieves its aims and that it acts sensibly, ethically and legally, and also that it operates in the interest of its members and the community that it serves. So to run your organisation, you will need a clear purpose and vision. There's a whole section about this in this module, which we'll explore further. A set of rules about how your organisation will be run. This is known as the governing document, with the most common being a constitution. And your constitution should include your purpose, who your members are and how they join, how your committee is elected and how your meetings are run. And this applies both to your committee meetings and your general meetings with your members, and also what to do if your organisation comes to an end, particularly about what to do with any resources that you have and whether they can go to another organisation with similar aims. You'll also need to have regular committee meetings, usually once a month, and to take a written note of each meeting. You'll need to have an annual general meeting for your members at least once a year where you present your annual report and your accounts to your members and where the members will then elect the committee. And very importantly, you'll need procedures for managing your group's money. Module 7 can help you with this. In terms of the legal structure of your organisation, this can be quite complex. So please do seek support if you can, as well as looking at our governance options fact sheet and our webpage for new groups. It's fine to stay as an informal group if that meets your needs, but many groups start off by becoming an unincorporated voluntary association, although this structure isn't suitable if you're planning to employ staff, enter contracts, take out a lease or manage large sums of money. An unincorporated voluntary association has a management committee, who are the people who run the organisation, and members, the people who use your services. In legal terms, an unincorporated voluntary association is a collection of individuals, so any debt or financial obligation are the responsibility of the individuals on the management committee, both individually and collectively. Although this may sound scary, the financial obligations of small groups are usually fairly low, and this means that the risk is low as well. The other legal option is to become incorporated. This means that your organisation has a legal personality. It can enter into contracts and employ staff in its own right. And it can limit the financial liability of the committee members. For example, a Scottish charitable incorporated organisation or a company limited by guarantee. Alternatively, if what you actually want to do is run a business with a social or environmental purpose, this is called a social enterprise, where the majority of profits that you make are reinvested into the organisation. Social enterprises can have a range of legal structures, which include community interest companies or cooperatives. Remember that even if you start small, as a small group or an unincorporated association, the organisation can grow 
and may require to change its legal structure as it develops. Lastly, becoming a charity is different from legal structure, but this is something that you may wish to consider, and you can find out more information in our fact sheet. So, in summary, running your organisation well needs a group or committee who are willing to work together to get things done and who are accountable to their wider membership, taking responsibility for their decisions and actions and enabling dialogue with their community. You'll need a clear purpose and set of rules and a clear plan of action. Module 4 can support you to develop this. And lastly, you'll need to agree who and how you'll take that action either individually or together. It can be helpful to think of running your group in terms of four pillars of good governance which are the focus of this module. These are, firstly, purpose, having a clear purpose and shared understanding of the reasons why your group exists. Secondly, having clear roles and responsibilities and the skills you need to carry these out. Thirdly, being able to run effective meetings, work well together and take good decisions. And lastly, that your work is based on your values the things you believe are important in how you carry out your work, and also that you're accountable to your members and are able to take responsibility for the group's decisions and actions. All four of these areas are covered in more detail in this module.